Well, good morning and welcome to Defining Moments this morning. We're just um, enjoying this new and fresh year the Lord has given us to come in and just start anew. You know, it's just so wonderful that we have this new year to see what God has in store for us. So as we're moving on into this time, we just want you to, you know, try to come along with us and spend as much time as possible with us. We'd love for you to join us each Sunday morning right here at this time on this station and just allow the Lord to minister to you. We've had so many wonderful testimonies. So many great things have been spoken and shared and you know, I know this year is it's not going to be any different from 2013. God is bringing in women and he is stirring them up and that this will be the year that you will just come forth in what God's called you to do and what God's called you to be. And we just want to encourage you to define the moment and don't let that moment define you. You know, whether it's uh, something that could pull you down and hold you captive Find your way through that by finding your way to Jesus and see what he has to say to you because I guarantee you, whatever you're going through, whatever you've been through, he's trying to bring something out in your life. And every opportunity we have, we have a chance that we can grow and learn. And we're just so delighted to be able to to help you on this journey. That's what these testimonies are for, to help you on your journey because somewhere you're going to hear a testimony that you're going to come across some words that are going to minister exactly what you need to hear at that moment. And today is going to be no exception. And we're just so excited about having my guest uh, with us today. She's come from Millbrook, Alabama, which is a nice little drive, but also my old stomping ground. I grew up in Millbrook and went to school there and had lots of friends, and my family still lives up there. And, you know, it's a, it's a good little town, and uh, they're really growing and prospering there. And, and it's just, just see that the Lord has blessed this little community. But <clears throat> before we go on into the program this morning, I want us to let's go to the Lord and prayer and let's just um ask him to have his way today and to touch you too as uh whoever you're praying for whatever you're praying for that we would just believe together for god to hear and to meet that need father we just thank you this morning for this time together we thank you that your presence is real and that you're here with us today and that you're there with your children whatever they're going through whatever their struggle Whatever their situation, whether it's sickness, whether it's a financial need, Lord, whether they need a job or they just need help and guidance in some direction of their life today, we just pray that, Lord, that they will find it at the foot of the cross. And we thank you that you will minister to each and every need as we trust you fully and put our complete confidence in you. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we just want to say... Thank you again for tuning in, and you know, this morning I am delighted to have Shay Jackson in the studio with me, and Shay has quite a story. She has written a book, and the name of her book is called My Life with a Dandelion, and you know, when you hear about that, you might not be able to put all the pieces together, but when she finishes or when she goes through part of her testimony, she won't by no means be finished with it, but she's going to hit the highlights today of her life uh, with the dandelion and it's quite an amazing story and so I just want you to tune your ear in to what she's going to share with you today and if you know anybody today that has a child that has special needs or is struggling in some area or parents that are struggling in this area I want you to run and take a moment and call them on the phone and say, hey, you need to tune in because the word you're going to hear today is going to be a word of encouragement, a word of hope, and a word of healing, and you're going to just witness the Father in action. You know, we talk about it, and we uh, share it from the pulpits, and we share it in Sunday school, but it's awesome to see the Father's love and grace and mercy in action, and I can promise you today that's what you're going to hear. And, you know, before she comes, I just want to read a little excerpt from her book. <clears throat> Excuse me. Just read a little section. And, and when you're listening to her share, I want you to keep this in mind. And she writes, and it says, As the days, weeks, and months passed, I learned to draw strength from knowing that the Father chose me to be the mother of this very special child. Honestly, it took some time for me to come to this conclusion. 
I often spent many days in prayer asking God why, rather than feeling honored for being chosen for this role. It took me many years to see things through his eyes. I'm so very glad that he didn't give up on me. I'm very grateful for his patience, grace, and love. I never lost my faith in him, but I did disappoint myself more times than I would care to remember. But you know, that's the wonderful thing about his grace. It is unmerited favor. It's not about what we can do and what we can achieve, but it's what he can do and achieve through us that matters. And so, Shay, this morning, welcome to Defining Moments, and you just allow the Holy Spirit to share with you however he sees fit. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn, for having me this morning. Um, you read that so beautifully, and when um, I hear it back, it just really um, touches me. Um, those words really came from the Father, and anybody that knows me knows that I am a planner. I have calendars that showed the whole month and not just a little daily calendar because I like to see everything you know, all at once. Um, but being the mother of a special needs child is something that I did not plan on. And uh, I'd like to read another little in, um, excerpt from my book. Um, Having a special needs child can make you feel isolated, overwhelmed, and very exhausted. I read somewhere that being a parent of a special needs child is like planning for that special vacation to somewhere tropical. You have packed lightly for the warm climate and you have planned to visit all the breathtaking sights. It's only when the plane lands that you realize that you are not in a tropical place. You are very far from it. You are in the middle of a snowstorm. You begin to think about, about how this could happen. You quickly search for your tickets to try to explain this is not your destination. Your thoughts are brought back to your lightweight clothing. You don't even have a coat. How are you going to survive this trip? You feel as if you are in the twilight zone as you try to flag down the flight attendant to explain your problem. You are met with a bright smile, but she is acting like she isn't hearing a word that you're saying. As you are escorted down the aisle to the exit, you continue to try to explain your dilemma. As you mix in with other passengers, you quickly realize that you are not prepared for what is happening. You try to talk to everyone that you see, and all of them think that you are crazy and they avoid you. You feel that you're all alone, and no matter who you talk to, no one can understand your distress. You have to make a choice. Make the best out of this trip, or continue to sit and complain. And that's what I was faced with when I found out that my daughter had um, special needs. She's been diagnosed with bipolar and autism, uh, paranoid schizophrenia, and disassociative disorders, and some mental delays. Even though she's highly functioning, all these things combined um, is a lot to have to deal with. And um, like Lynn had said before, um, it took me a while to figure out that, you know, I, this was a privilege for me to be able to be chosen as her daughter. And I did ask why so many times. Um, I sat down because I thought that I had no friends because everybody that, when we got together, they didn't know how to react around my daughter. And seeing things from their point of view, I can understand that, you know, they didn't know how to react. And so I, we really felt isolated. And the only piece that I got is the time that I spent with the Lord. And I started keeping a journal. And that's where my book comes from, is my prayer journal and how I began to see the changes that were happening. Um, I would write um, everything that worked for my daughter, everything that didn't work. I would write things that she ended up um, being what I saw as miracles. Um, and I want to encourage you today that if you're going through a period where you think that you are all alone, I want to encourage you that you are not alone. Philippians 4.13 is my life verse. It brought me through so many dark days. Um, the light of God shone through. And Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things. Not by myself, right? I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Um, I was going through a really wilderness journey, a very difficult wilderness journey. And, uh, that word is used a lot, those two words in my book, um, because I had done a Beth Moore Bible study that talked about wilderness journeys. And then a revelation came to me that at any given time, 
that we are either entering into a wilderness journey, in the middle of a wilderness journey, or coming out of a wilderness journey. And what we learn from each experience is priceless. And what I learned through this wilderness journey with my special needs daughter is that all life is precious to God and that he does not make mistakes and that he does give you the strength that you need to conquer all the things that are in your path. Um, I have to tell you that I was encouraged to write this story because I was told that it was going to give hope and encouragement to others that may be on the same road. Um, I was visiting a friend and she said, you know, I don't see the, the young lady that you're talking about. I, I don't see that in your daughter. And I began to share with her some of the things that God had done in my daughter's life. And she said, you know, you need to put that in a, in a book form. And I thought, you know, this was a couple of years ago. And I said, there's, you know, I, I, I'm not a writer. I, I don't, you know, speak in to, to groups or anything. I'm a more of a one-on-one -on -one person. And she said, no, I really think that you should do it. And, and people need to know that uh, God still does miracles today. So I considered it, and I wrote a little bit here and there, and then kind of forgot about it. And um, I got a call from her, and she says, look, I have a contact. Um, you need to call this person, this person, and um, I think that everything is going to go great from there. And I considered it, but then I kind of put it on a shelf again. And finally, she called me one last time, and I guess that third time was a charm because she said, you're going to do this. This needs to be done. So I did. It took me about a year to write everything, and I'm going to tell you that the book for me was a healing because I had to go back through all of those dark days where I didn't see the light, and I had to keep reminding myself, but you know the end of the story. You know the end, and so this is just, this is just a time that you saw God work. You need to keep moving forward and know that you are not alone. And I saw in each entry that I was not alone. And I tried to make it uh, the end of, of each entry be a positive note. And some days I was successful and some days not. Um, but most of the time they were very successful in in being uh, positive. Uh, I will tell you that my daughter is a very high functioning that she is 22 years old and she works at Goodwill. Um, Goodwill has given her the opportunity to, to strive for better uh, a better life and um, because of her autism um, she likes things that are in order and she is given the task of sorting. That is her job at Goodwill. She works in the warehouse and she really enjoys that part of it because it allows her um, to use her gifts of the sorting part um, and, and she gets a, a paycheck and um, she feels like she is um, a, a productive citizen and that's something that the doctors early on told us um, that she would never be. They encouraged us to go ahead and put her in, in an institution and told us that she would never be a productive citizen, that um, we were just wasting our time um, spending any time with her. And um, that was real disheartening because, you know, you go to a doctor thinking that they're going to actually help you and you leave with... Um, you, you leave feeling very discouraged um, and I hope that if you've gotten that report from a doctor or maybe you've gone to three or four doctors like we did um, don't listen to them because the greatest physician the great physician is God the Father and you know I had to keep putting my faith in him God you gave me this child what do you want me to do and everything that I tried that the doctors wanted me to do it failed so I thought, okay, God, this it's got to be just me and you. And so many of the things that he brought forth were miracles. They worked so great. And none of the doctors had even considered any of those things that we um, used. Um, my daughter had a lot of anger problems. And um, it was revealed to me to... to help her to deal with her anger in a very unique way. Uh, we took two peanut butter jars and cleaned them out after all the peanut butter was gone. One of them became the angry jar and it was painted red and the other one became the happy thoughts jar. 
Well, the red jar, uh, we wrote angry. Um, uh, being angry is no fun. And in that um, jar, she was able to yell. She took the lid off and she was able to yell into it and let all of her anger out. And she quickly put the lid back on it. And then, because all of that was empty, she had to refill it with something. So she took the other jar that we had cleaned out, and we had painted it pink, and put um, happy thoughts written on it. And it was little slips of paper that, of the things that made her happy, and we had done those together. Um, they could be making cookies with mom, or watching a movie, or anything that made her happy. And she was able to go in and fill that spot where that anger had been and read off all the things that made her happy. And we still use those jars today. Um, I would encourage you to think outside the box. Um, try something different. Um, find a, a good friend that you know that you can confide in and talk to them. A person that you know will not judge you. Um, have some time but just for you and daily daily pray for wisdom and strength and um, pray for your child I know that as a parent uh, we want to help all the time and help do things for our children but you know God revealed to me that um, if we step in every single time then our children fail to learn how to mature and make better choices. So sometimes we have to step back and and wait. Um, and I know that the Lord answers in three ways to our prayers. Yes, no, and wait. And if I had gotten everything that I had asked for in my prayer, um, my daughter wouldn't be the person that she is today. I wouldn't be the person that I am today. So I'm very thankful that God allowed me to walk through the wilderness journey, allowed me to mature and make really good choices. Um, I know that you can be, as a parent of a special needs child, weary and stressed out, but I want to encourage you to know that you're never alone, that God is with you, and write that verse, Philippians 4.13. When you're feeling like you're going to just give up, just throw your arms up and you know, say, I can't do it anymore, just know that you can do it because God's going to give you the strength to do it. Um, my book is called My Life with a Dandelion. And I entitled it that because a lot of people, when they think of a dandelion, they think of an unwanted weed. And that's what I felt that the world saw my daughter as. But I'm happy to report that she is anything but an unwanted weed. That she was a beautiful flower. And um, when the, the seeds of the dandelion, when they make the little white puffs, my daughter calls those blow it flowers. Because that's what you do with them is you blow them. And so she's not an unwanted weed, but a beautiful blow it flower. Um, you can get my book. It's $10 on Amazon. Um, but if you're in a place where you just maybe um, can't afford that, I will um, be more than happy to work with you. And uh, if you will just write me an email at mylifewiththedandelion at gmail.com, I will be more than happy um, to make sure that you get a copy. Um, I hope that the book is full of wisdom and encouragement. And most of all, I wrote the book as a testimony of God's grace. And I wanted him to be glorified because there would be no way that I could have made it without him. You know, the part that I read when we came on the air about you saying, you know, that you had chosen to be her mother. I felt like that, you could call that maybe a defining moment when you said, you know, God chose me because he knew I could handle it. Um, I read something in your book I wanted you to share with them was what happened the night that 
she had that the jar of angry thoughts and you were going to take the top off what she said it would happen uh, yeah well we took the um jar outside and um as our um our program goes or what what we do with it is we take it outside and we let the anger go to the angry place and at that moment there were birds that were flying over and um she says mama what happens if the the angry gets on the birds <laughs> And, um, of course, we said that we hoped that they wouldn't poop on us. <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't get mad with us. That was cute. That was funny. <clears throat> but, you know, throughout this whole journey, I've seen the father just reading your book and, and hearing you talk, how the father's just always been there with one creative idea after another. When doctors said, look, let's just um, consider putting her in a, a place where she's out of society out of your hair so to speak you know it's sad to say there are people that have made that choice because they were hopeless they didn't know what to do but we as Christians we know that our hope is in God and that it doesn't matter what the situation is it's never hopeless to him so there's you know people listening today maybe they're just dealing with rebellious children maybe they're dealing with children that um, are sick or they've gone through an extended period of trial and with their children. I mean, of all people, you can give an encouraging word to them to tell them, you know, look, don't give up. Just keep strug Just keep going. If it's a struggle, keep struggling. You know, just keep going. Just speak a word into their life today, Shay, and and just encourage that mom that feels isolated and ready to just pull her hair out because. There's just, there's nobody giving her any encouragement. The doctors aren't encouraging her. Mm -hmm. But you've been there, done that, so you encourage her today. Well, I have to say that probably the best thing would be consistency. You know, we know what the rules are in the world. You have to stop at a stop sign, a red light, and, you know, um, God never changes. So I would have to say to... Continue to be consistent if you have a if you have a rule in your house that you don't want to be broken, they have to have a consequence and stay with that consequence. Um, make sure that that child feels safe in your house and that you're consistent and positive. Just stay positive. I know that that's hard to do when um, all these things are coming against you and you may have um, been discouraged. I would just have to say stay positive, stay consistent. Tell that child how much that you love them. Um, I know there's a lot of times that when things are not always going right in the home that um, you know the child can maybe feel like that they're out of control too and they need to know that no matter what they do, you still love them and that they are so valuable that you're going to get through this time together. Stay consistent, stay positive, stay in prayer because God will take his arms and he will wrap them around you and you will feel so much strength that Philippians 4.13, when you think that you cannot make it, you will have the strength to carry on. Amen. It's a good word. Because I know even just dealing even with children that don't have special needs, mm -hmm. kids are kids. They're going to make some really bad choices sometimes. And, I mean, I know people that have made bad choices. But you don't throw the, the baby out with the bathwater. You hold on and you continue to pray and lead and guide that child. And, and then with a child, you know, I have a friend that she's gone to be with Jesus now, but her son... I was born um, with cerebral palsy. Well, he was born okay and developed cerebral palsy from complications and um, has been diagnosed as uh, being mentally retarded. And a lot of people would have given up on him and said, you know what, he's never going to be any different. You got this, this, you know, this problem and He's going to be with you forever, and, and unless you separate yourself, you're never going to have a life, and look what it's going to do to your other kids, and her other kids came along, and they helped. Mm -hmm. I mean, they just came, this was their brother. This is their big mm -hmm. brother, and they came along, and they helped, and I'm telling you, she taught him the word. Mm 
Mm-hmm. He has always, to this day, he is, almost, he is 50 years old. And to this day, he'll tell you that he's going to preach. Mm-hmm. He writes scripture. He, he has his Bible. He has his notebook. And he's constantly writing. And, you know, I've watched her, her struggle and have challenges with him. But, you know, like I said, she's gone on to be with the Lord. And he lives with his brother now. But he will tell you right now that if something's going on in his life that it doesn't seem right, he'll tell you, it ain't nothing but the devil. (laughs) That's what he'll say, you know, because there's been a seed planted. There's been a seed planted, and and that's what you have done. You've planted seeds in your kids, and you're reaping a a beautiful daisy, Mm -hmm. a beautiful flower. Mm -hmm. And, And like she said, every life is valuable. No life is without purpose. I will mm-hmm. never believe that any life is without purpose. That's why I don't believe in abortion. Right. Whether, no matter how that child is conceived, you know, God's got a purpose for that life. And so before we go off the air, I want you to take a moment and just pray with these ladies. That Just pray encouragement over them and strength over them. And however the Lord leads you this morning, just pray for them. Father, I come before you in the name of your son, Jesus. I just thank you for this opportunity to be here today. And I just lift up all of these people that are listening. Father, touch them. I bring them to you. You know what their needs are. And I just thank you, Father, for meeting them right where they are. Yes, Lord. Just ask that you give them an encouragement hug. Father, just let them know that they can do all things through Christ who gives them strength. Just Thank you, Lord, for the 86,400 seconds that you give us each day to make good choices. And sometimes we don't make the best choices. We just ask, Father, that your grace is sufficient for all of us. Yes, Lord. That when we do mess up and we do fail, that your grace is right there to meet us. And, Father, we just thank you and praise you for me being the mother of a special needs child for helping me to grow in my wilderness journeys from the past and those that are coming in the future just ask for strength and wisdom to all those that are listening and thank you and praise you father in jesus name amen amen thank you again shay for coming and sharing this beautiful story don't forget get this book my Life with a Dandelion on Amazon, or either contact her at her email address, which is mylifewithadandelion at gmail.com or .org? .com. .com, okay. And um, get up with her. We want to get this book in your hands. It'll be a story. You'll. It's well worth reading, and you'll be so blessed for doing it. And of everything you've heard us say here today, always remember this, that when you realize just how much Jesus Christ loves you, then you will experience your greatest defining moment.